Get into it. Host, don't have to. You got your phone on something? I'll do that. <laughs> All right, we'll get straight into it. Uh, everyone, thank you for coming. My name's Nick, and on behalf of Dan and I, we are Fighter Promotions, and we're excited here for a pay-per-view live and exclusive on Stan Sport. Uh, last week, we announced this event called Battle on the Reef, which is in Townsville on Saturday, 7th of October, just six days after the Rugby League Grand Final. And we announced some big names, including Jason Tamalolo, Junior Paulo, and Nelson Asafa Solomona with the event to be headlined by IBO Intercontinental light heavyweight Paulo Acuso. Um, today it's really exciting. We've been in discussions with uh, Tavita and Jermaine for a little while, and uh, we were ready to uh, put some names out in the last couple of weeks, but the, uh, the landscape's changed, and obviously uh, Tavita's making a big announcement that the, uh, the boxing ring is, is going to be his future home and his future profession. So Tavita Pengai Jr. will be uh, on our fight card, along with those big rugby league names, as long as his brother, Jermaine Pengai. So we've got two brothers in Paulo and Austin Okuso, and two brothers in Tavita and, and Jermaine. So on behalf of Stan Sport, which is live and exclusive pay-per-view, we're really excited to have these two big names. Uh, the boys here answer any questions today that you've got. Um, obviously, we're here just to talk about the boxing event and, and the boys' careers. So, thanks for coming. The boys will step up and uh, engage. So, over to you, lads. Leader, now that you're back in a boxing gym, any regrets about the decision you've made? No, there's no regrets. Um, you got to think uh, pretty hardly when you're walking away from seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So, um, no, nah, there's no regrets, and um, I love my boxing, and I'm going to take it seriously. Uh, it means a lot, man. Um, we've been on this boxing journey for a while. Um, he moved up to Brisbane with me um, in 2019. He was 150 kilos um, in Canberra, living with my parents, playing Fortnite and eating ice cream. And I said, you're coming up with me to Brisbane. And um, it, the plan wasn't to go and box. It was just to come get healthy. And, um, you know, we used boxing as a way to get healthy. And then we both fell in love with the sport. So... Um, you know, boxing saved our lives in a way, and um, you know we want to do something that we love every day. What excites you most about this next career move? Um, just that nothing's promised. Um, you know, I come from a sport where um, you know talent's got me, gotten me so far, but this sport, if you don't work hard, you're going to sleep on the canvas. So you got to work hard, and um, you know I ain't going to sleep in front of my family. I think in my fight preps, I've learned that I, lo I, I love boxing, um, especially in my last one. Uh, you know, I take it seriously, and uh, you know, when I when I started it, you know, everyone that knows me, in my family, uh, they know that I love my footy and I watch a lot of footy. But when he started to lean over, and I was watching old school fights and watching Tyson Fury and watching all the greats, and I was all my time was going into boxing. That's when I knew that I had to make this this um, decision. Who's your right? Who's my idol? Um, I've got a few. I like uh, the current um, undisputed champ, uh, Terence Crawford. He's good, smart boxer, and uh, he works hard. Jermaine, can you tell us a little bit about your journey and how much of an inspiration your brother's been? Oh, yeah, my brother's been a real big inspiration for me. Like, he, uh, like he banged me over, he took me under his wing. He's also been like a great mentor to me as well as uh, as I looked up to him, making me feel that I'm healthy, making sure that my mind space is right and all those such things that just makes me feel happy about myself. In terms of your progression, what sort of golf you, what do you want to be doing? Uh, for my goal for me, I'm just really focused on the fight that's coming soon. So after that, then I'll probably have an answer for you. Did <laughs> you ever fight each other? Yeah, we've had some sparring, but like, um, yeah, I, I don't really like sparring. My brother is a southpaw and he's big. And he's, um, <laughs> he's been, he was, while I was doing footy training, he was boxing every day, so. He's, a, he's, he's far ahead of me, and um, we'll see on October 7th. Um, you know, I reckon my brother can box, and he'll be a household name in boxing. You spoke about the, the discipline that you've helped apply to your brother to get healthy through boxing. Are you determined to apply that discipline to the, the end of your rugby league career, named on the reserves bench against Manly? Yeah, I've, I've got two weeks, and these will be my two final games in rugby league, and 
I'm going to give my all to boxing and, um, you know, hopefully we can get two good wins to finish the season and then um, straight into camp, me and my brother gone straight up to Brisbane, straight after the Titans game, up the highway, up to Brisbane and straight into camp and uh, focus on the October 7th. I mean, it's a really exciting week, but is there anything that scares you slightly about making such a um, obviously, it is scary, um, you know, but uh, this is what I want to do and this is what I love. Um, you know, I said the other day that I was sort of forced into it, but any smart parent would lead their, their kid to play football instead of boxing. So, um, you know, I thank my parents for that and it's given me the life that I have today, but you come to an age where you want to do what you want to do and what you've always wanted to do and that's boxing for me. And where do you see Um, you know, I'm going to take it step by step, but, um, you know, we're in a gym right now where one of uh, the top po uh, prospects train, um, Liam Talavar, Liam Talavar, and, um, you know, there's a lot of good heavyweights. We've seen last night on the No Limit show that there's heavyweights everywhere in Australia, and, um, you know, it's a good time to be a heavyweight in Australia. Um, yeah, I was only young, but I used to stay up late. Um, I still give it to Chuck and Coda for showing the Danny Green fight, the first one, so late. I was trying to stay up as much as I could, but I, I think I ended up falling asleep and then watching it the next day. So, um, yeah, no, Chuck's been a big influence on my decision. Um, you know, just his, how brave he was with the, with the decision that he made. How much are you leaning on him for advice? Um, a lot. My trainer actually trained Chuck at the back end of his career, so... Um, you know, Chuck will always come in and give us his tips and, you know, obviously uh, gladly listen. What's your metric for success and what, what's going to be success for you? Uh, just giving my best every day, doing what I love, um, you know, working on my discipline and that was one of the big reasons why I walked away from rugby league is that, you know, you're, you're in a sport where talent can't get you um, to the level you want to get to and, um, you know, this sport it requires 100%, you can't be 50-50. Uh, I think they're both really hard, and but at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm going to enjoy these last two weeks and then go into full-time boxing. Well, so we've got some big league names on the card: Drew Paulo, Jason Tamalolo, Nelson Osopo Solomona. Obviously, you're joining. Who else should we target as uh, as a fight promoter out of the NRL that you think could make the transition into the ring? Um, I think if Xavier Var and Alex Leopold, they play in a role. They're, they're two big heavyweight names that are good. And um, obviously, Josh Halloway has got a boxing background. And um, who else, Jermaine? Well, I think Payne Hass, eh? Because, um, oh, sorry. I think Payne Hass, because um, back in Brisbane, when I used to live up there, he would um, give, me a good, give me a good run for his money and then he'd um, school me out sometimes. So I think he's a great potential in picking him as a fighter. Yeah, Payne Hass would be good. <coughs> Uh, just naturally fit. His dad worked him hard from a kid, so you know, half the battle as a, uh, as a box, in the boxing ring is uh, fitness, and he can go all day. That kid. <laughs> so we do this October seven, and then we get pain on. Yeah, we'll, let's get pain on the next <laughs> one. <laughs> so Peter, is there any consideration at all, depending on your journey in boxing, to ever go back to the NRL? Uh, like I said, mate, it's, if if I'm thinking like that, then I'm I'm gonna fail. So. My heart's in boxing and I'm going to give it my all and we'll see what, what that is. We all good? Yeah, yeah, sure. How are you? Yeah. Chuck, what do you think of the path that Mr. Vegas decided to walk? Um, <clears throat> the path's a... One, it's one of the hardest paths to, to walk, but he's got a passion for the sport. Like, you know, when I left the game back in 2000, I had the same passion. I wanted to chase my dreams, and I'm sure he's got his own dreams. And, um, you know, and, he, and, he, and he's made that choice. So, mate, I've I'm, I'm, got nothing but support for him. I'm here for him, whatever he needs. And um, I've been, I'm, I'm a man that's been there, done that, and you know, got that experience and runs on the board. That sweat, sweat equity that 
you know, over the years, so I can help him a lot. What's your advice to make that path a little easier to travel? Um, path is just, you know, obviously you're going to have the dedication, the discipline, the sacrifice that you need to, to make, not be at the clubs with the women and, you know, drinking and whatnot, you know, just doing the right things, um, trying to set goals for himself, you know, Firstly, the, maybe the Australian Kyle will be a uh, um, first one to, off the bat. Then slowly, slowly build from there. And um, he, he shouldn't if he wa if he wants to go full time for this with this with this game. He can't come in thinking like you know undervalue himself, uh, under like dream little. You got to dream big, man. You know what I mean? He wants a big. F you gotta, why can't he fight with Joshua? Why can't he fight um, these guys? You know. And once he gets the experience and, and then runs on the board, you know what I mean? Getting them mega fights, that's, that's what it's about. You're putting your life on the line. They're both, both Jermaine and, and Tabita. I mean, they both got talent and they have the, I reckon they have the, um, the ability to, to get these type of fights. And especially with their profiles and what what's Tabita's done in, in the league, Jermaine's, uh, you know, good willing is about to. Um, you know, it's, it's only good for the boys. Um, you, you walked away from a lot of money in rugby league. And, um, the most money. I'm the most now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most, bro. 750, I'm baby. the most. <laughs> yeah, 70, 750 in today's terms, 600 back then was like 1.5 million. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 anyway, so like, you're like an inspiration for him in some ways. Yeah, uh, yeah man, I just, well, I, I'm a guy that, you know, like I said, no one's walked my walk. No, I don't care what the media say. What the, the 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 critics say, I'm the best athlete ever. Not not of this time, not of that time, but of all time. You know what I mean? Not, not of this time, not of that time, but of all time, brother. No one's walked my walk ever. I went from team sport, which I was the best, whipped them all. They all know it. That's why they, they can't say nothing because I whipped them. But anyway, from that to 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 a three-time world champ, technically four. Because I was, you know, I won the Super World's Weight um, WBC interim bill as well. So I mean, there isn't that. I'm, I'm, I'm number one. Daylight second. Whoever you want third, put third. But um, hopefully he can have that mentality and chase and chase that dream and become number two. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey, 650 <laughs> back then is a lot of money, so yeah, we'll give him that one. But what about his confidence? I mean, obviously, it takes that confidence to succeed in the sport you're in. Yeah, well, you, you need confidence, and um, you know, Chuck has that, but he also has the ability to back it up. And I feel I have the same ability. I don't have the boxing background that he grew up in, but he's a very boxing. You can rely on athleticism, and I'm, I'm a student of the game. I'll learn the game and uh, see how far I can go. Chuck, don't you think it's a great message putting out there, follow your dreams? Yeah, what man. What are you doing? Just go chase it. Exactly, bro. Like, to be just, just sort of coming from my cloth, you know what I mean? Like, going from league, but we're one of the best players in the league, one of the best props, you know, in, in the game to, to try and to achieve in a, in a, in a sport, individual sports, probably one of, one of the most gladiatorial, sort of hardest sports in the world, you know what I mean? And. You know, like I said, you've got to dream big. You've got to learn along the way. You've got to learn uh, on the go, like I did. But I didn't, you know, even though my dad was a fighter, I, I wasn't in the gym all the time. I was, I was playing league from four years old. That's why, I, you know, I was running shit while I was, time I was 20. But then, you know, so I, I dabbled in boxing, like David is dabbling um, at, before, and now he's, he's taking it serious. He's taking it full time. So he's got to learn on the job. He's got, he hasn't got the, the amateur pedigree that you need to you know, win a world title in 10 fights, 15 fights, he ain't got that pedigree. So he's going to take him a bit more time and a bit more patience, but he'll get better um, every time, 100%. Chuck, are you going to teach him how to trash talk? Mate, that's part of the game, but I mean, T's, T's like, T's is a gentle giant, you know what I mean? Like, the brothers is like, you know, you just want to hug him like a teddy bear, you know what I mean? <laughs> but he's got, to, he's, got to, he's got to find that killer. If he wants to be a, you know, a contender for the title, He's got to find that killer, in, killer inside of him. You know, I don't know what's got to bring it out, but he's got to find it. Have you got it? I think 
I think that's why the fans enjoy my game is that one-on-one -on -one battle. Uh, you know, I always take on the biggest name in their pack, and that's why I want to go to boxing because I want that one-on-one -on -one battle. Um, he can go as far as he wants to go. You know what I mean? Like, like, like I said, I said to all the kids and all the people I speak to through my mindset, Monday mindset program, no dreams too big. You know what I mean? You can take it wherever you want. It's the sacrifice and what you put in is what you get out. So he's got talent, he's got ability, but he's in the, he's in the, the, the game of the big boppers. You know what I mean? So he's with the big boys and uh, the heavyweights. So one, one shot can be, can be cru crucial. So. Is he a big bopper? Oh, he's definitely a big bopper. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he got that power too. You seen that the last sort of fight he fought, the, the highlight reel. That's you know, it's, he, he, I just want to see highlight reels from from Twitter. Just knocking them out. Beautiful. Thanks, Thank gentlemen.